When we started shopping for our sailboat, our catamaran, we knew that we wanted lithium batteries. We wanted the durability, the longevity, the uh, energy density of the lithium batteries. We want to set up our boat to be a long range, off the grid cruising catamaran. We also knew that it was very unlikely that we were going to find a boat that was already equipped with lithium power. So we knew we were going to be doing it ourselves. And this is one of the things that I have been most excited about. So these are prismatic cells so honestly, this reminds me a little bit of Back to the Future when Doc Brown was pulling out the plutonium and putting it in the, the DeLorean. In this video, I'm going to start the process on our build. I've been researching the options for quite a long time. And while drop-in replacement batteries are a good fit for a lot of people, it was not a good fit for us. So we are going to be building our own system from scratch with raw cells this is a DIY project that comes in at approximately 25% the cost if you were to buy these drop-in uh, replacement batteries. Stick around, I'm gonna start from the beginning. I'm hoping to do this in two videos, but it may end up being a three video series. It should be really interesting and I'm super excited to get everything online. Let's change our story, let's change our life. We'll do it our way, our own design. This is one of five boxes that we received. I bought these on Alibaba. They come directly from China. And here's an interesting thing that I didn't realize right away. China is the only place in the world that makes lithium. So all of these other brands that are on the market, like uh, Battleborn, Dakota Lithium, Relyon, you know, the, there's, there's lots of them. Um, they are all buying their raw cells and elements from China because that's the only place that sells them. So now the build quality might vary from brand to brand, um, but that's where, where we come in. We're gonna build our own. So these are prismatic cells, and that has to do with the type of uh, a battery they are, but you can get more energy density um, with the prismatic cells than you can with, uh, with other types, like cylindrical cells. These are the bus bars and bolts that we will need. And so far, these things have been packaged pretty tight. So the reason that we bought these from China on Alibaba is because they came in a little bit cheaper. But we since found them on Amazon and they are basically the same exact cells. But uh, this is what these cells look like. These are prismatic cells. They are surprisingly heavy. The energy density in these guys is intense. These are 280 amp hours each with a voltage of 3.2. So when you put these into a series configuration, that'll give you that 13 volt um, typical drop and replacement type of battery that you're looking for. So typically the first thing that you wanna do when you get these is you want to inspect them to make sure that there's no uh, damage on any of the cells. These should be grade A cells. They shouldn't have any dents or dings um, or any blemishes. So the next thing that you'll want to do is check the voltage on these guys to make sure that they are all about the same. I got 3.28, that's interesting. That's okay, we're going to do a top balancing on these to get them all exactly the same. Okay, so the next step is I'm gonna start building a box because like I said, I've got five sets of four and I need to house them. So I'm going to build plywood boxes to house them and I've got a, a special way that I'm gonna go about doing that. I'm getting ready to cut this plywood here. I've got a fence clamped on, I've got my line marked what I need. I'm gonna need a few of these, but the weather is killing me. I've actually had to wait several days to do this. Look at this, look at this. You see this fogginess, just yuck. And I'm sure it's not picking up on camera, but I can see it blowing through. I mean, it's terrible, but we gotta get this refoot done because if we don't, we will never get done with this project. And so we're moving along. That's just all we have to do. Um, but let's get this cut.
Okay, so I've got three, pretty close. This doesn't have to be extremely precise because um, we're just building boxes and they'll be trimmed out and, and, and you know, we have a little bit of forgiveness when we assemble these, we can cut them on the table saw or shape or whatever, um, but I've got them close. So next step, um, I actually need to get my table saw from the truck. There's some weirdo stuff going on out here today with the spooky fog. Okay, so it's the next day. We had much better weather today. Um, I got all of my boards cut out yesterday for the battery boxes and I'm working my way through assembling these. So um, real quick, obviously the four batteries are going to sit in here. I've got a tiny little um, rabbit set there because my plan is once they're all wired up, I'm going to have a piece of plexiglass sit on top of them and then that will give us the protection that we need um, you know, so that no one accidentally shorts it out or a bolt or a wrench doesn't fall in there and short it out, you know, that sort of thing. So that'll give us that. On the front, I'm going to have the BMS and we'll have holes drilled through to, to run those wires in. And then we'll have a piece of plexiglass on the front to protect that. Um, but I want to show you real quick how these are going together. Okay, so this is my Craig pocket screw jig. This this thing has been a favorite tool of mine for a really long time. And if you're interested in, in one of these, if you have projects of your own, it really makes it go fast. I'll put a link down below in the video description. But basically, so this is my, these sides that go here and I got this rabbit. So I know that I need my pocket screws here. So basically you just put this guy in here, you clamp it down and then you drill like this. leaves you with this perfect hole that you then run a screw down that will come out the end and into the other side. So you can see here, screw in and fix that. Okay guys, I'm finishing up um, the construction on the boxes. They are glued, they are screwed, and I'm just softening these edges with my battery operated portable router. This thing is fantastic. And um, I highly recommend Rigid Tools. I've got a link in the video description below, but uh, I'm just softening these edges. So this is my 120 amp um, BMS battery management system. This one is unique because it has the extra wires. A lot of times these will either have one or it'll only have two. This middle one will be missing and they'll just use these two, but that's usually the 100 amp. Um, but because it has three, that means it can handle 120 amps of current. Um, these guys are labeled B minus. That means it goes to the battery. And these guys are labeled C minus, which means it goes to your loads, your negative loads. Um, this has the Bluetooth module, which is this guy here. So we're going to install that and tuck it all away. Um, it'll be really cool to link up to these cells individually and see, but that Bluetooth module just snaps right in there and then just hangs out, stay out of the way. Uh, the next thing that we have, this is the wiring harness and you should see for us because we have four cells and we're going to link them in series because each cell is about 3.8 volts. So when you link them in series, that gets us to that 14 and a half volts that we're looking for. But you can see there's five individual wires. This is super easy. There's only one way to do this. And that goes right in here. And then these little wires kind of hanging out here, this is a temperature sensor. So this is also incredibly important because lithium iron phosphate batteries or sometimes called LiPo fours do not do well charging at very cold temperatures. This guy is the computer. It is the brain of the operation. It is going to monitor all of my cells. It's going to make sure that they hit the parameters, the charging capacity, the discharge capacity, the temperature. If it gets too hot or if it gets too cold, it will shut it down. 
um, it will monitor all of that. This is redundancy. Now we will also have this sort of uh, programming in our uh, charger inverter, as well as the solar uh, MPPTs will have different parameters. There's a lot of redundancy in the system, which makes it incredibly safe. But to prep this, basically we just need to put on some ring terminals. So this is kind of cool. So this is one of my packs and the batteries are in here and I've got them all. Um, if you can see here, if you can see the gray and it's harder to see, but back here is black. So um, these are negatives and these are positive. And what this is going to do is it puts them all in a family, so to speak. And then they will, um, if one cell is a little bit low, it will come up and the other one will go down and they'll balance. This is what's called top balancing. You just get them set up like this and you let them sit for a couple of days or so and they will automatically self level. And then you know you're at a starting point where they are all identical. Okay guys, I've got my batteries top balanced. I've got them in a series configuration. They are measuring 13.3 volts. Uh, it's time to connect the BMS that we prepped just a few minutes ago. Um, in my box, I have drilled two holes, one there and one here. This is my negative side and my blue uh, connectors here that are labeled B minus on this particular BMS are going to that negative post. My plan was to attach the BMS to the outside of the box over here. And then also the black lead is my main negative, which also needs to feed through here. All of my leads I'm going to have feed through this particular hole here. My black lead and my main negative go on here just like this. Okay, so the main negative leads are attached on the BMS cable. These are in a very particular order. So the first one goes to your main negative. The second one goes to the, to the uh, positive in the first cell. So this is the first cell. So this is the first positive. And then the second positive will go right here. All right, there's my main battery positive. Here is my main battery negative. Um, these are not connected yet because the balance speed leads are not connected. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and tidy this up a little bit here. So this is one pack completed. Uh, the BMS is here on the front. It's all wired up and the app is running as expected. I'm basically making my own drop-in replacement. So these are modular system. It took a little bit of figuring out to get the app set for this particular um, uh, setup with the 280 amp hours at uh, the 3.2 volts with the 120 amp EMS, but this is pretty cool. So it's monitoring live uh, the voltage and it's telling me I'm at 100%. Um, how many amp hours I've used out of this particular pack, how many amp hours I have left. Uh, which is all pretty awesome. So we're gonna have an article written up on our Patreon page. Um, it'll be free even for people that aren't patrons. So you can head over there. I'll have a link in my video description below. Remember all of the products that we're using are linked in the video description below. Most of them to Amazon, a few of them to other places. We are an Amazon affiliate. So if you use those links, we get a small commission uh, referral for, for uh, you going through that link. Um, it's no additional cost to you, but we really appreciate it. It helps us out. Next time I'm going to finish all five of these units so we were going to have this all up and running in our next video um, here to come soon we're going to incorporate solar but i'm going to get it all wired up and ready to go just solar will just need plugged in basically um, if you haven't already give us a like for this video and uh, subscribe and we'll see you next time